Happy Friday, everybody! Hello, it's Linda, and this is who is this? Carl from the Colorworks Design House here in beautiful Palm Desert, California, greeting you on this lovely Friday afternoon. It is, um, it's actually morning for us. It's Friday, if you can believe it, February 5th. Where did the month of January go? And guess what today is? Today is... Yay! So hello, hello, everybody. I hope this uh, this video, live video, is finding you all doing really well. And if you had snow that you've dug out, that you're warm, you're cuddly, um, we are, our temperature went up to 80 degrees yesterday. So that was quite a shock. Um, the quilt that's behind me on the wall here is called Mod Blossom. And we just thought it would be nice to have a springy looking kind of quilt on the wall behind me. And um, this is going to be one of the new online classes coming your way from Colorworks. We're going to have more announcements about online classes that you can take with me and perhaps Carl in the future oh, yes. at our next Fab Friday broadcast. Um, we are going to be off next week. Um, so we will be back online or uh, to you live Friday, February 19th with all the news on online classes and other good things. Um, what else do I need to say? I think that was it. Like and share this video, of course. Make sure that you share it with friends so we can grow our Colorworks gang here. Um, make sure that you subscribe to our Colorworks YouTube channel. Um, we're almost at a thousand subscribers last I looked, so that would be really great to get your friends to subscribe too and get us over that thousand subscriber mark. That would be fabulous for YouTube. Um, and so let's see who's checking in for where. I know Marianne was there right away looking for pearls of wisdom. Yes, I hope so. We'll see. I, I, I hope I have pearls of wisdom for everybody today. Hello, Julie from Oceanside. Nice to have you there. And who else, Carl? We've got um, Kelly, good morning. Yes, I'm having to look over his shoulder like this all the time. And Sandra is checking in from where? St. Louis. Oh, St. Louis, yes. Hello. And who else, Carl, just before we go? Well, a couple more. Helen, he's being very quiet, isn't he? He well, just said something and then now he's quiet. No, no, you no, know. I'm good. I'm just technically, I'm, I'm in a go here. Having a go? Oh, yes. Getting used to it again? No, no. Or no. you're just spinning through, hello, yes. hello. So I should just say hello to everybody. Well, okay, let's check in. Should we check in with the cactus cam? Do you think anything's happening out there? Hi, Vanita. There we go. Let's see. Anything happening with that cactus cam? It's oh, there, it's about. there. It's a beautiful day, though. Can you see that? That's out on the 15th hole of our little develop, condo development here in beautiful Palm Desert. Those mountains behind the golf course there that you see in the distance, they had the most beautiful dusting of snow the other day um, after we had some rain. And it was just gorgeous here. And then in the distance, you saw all the snow-capped mountains. So Beautiful. If you ever get a chance to come down to Palm Desert, Palm Springs, please come visit us. It is a beautiful, beautiful little area of California um, that is great. And uh, summer is not too hot, only 120 degrees or something it's like that. It's a breeze. That. It's a breeze. It's a breeze. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about last week's winner. You know, every week on the Fab Friday broadcast, we give away a $10 Color Works gift card to a random winner, or I should say, a winner is selected by the random thingamajizer. And so every Everybody who commented it goes into this random thingamajizer and it picks a winner. So this week's winner, uh, well, wait, the question last week was, uh, what would you put in your square in a square? Because you know we're doing the building block basics tutorials. And so this week we're going to do flying geese. Last week, episode number 30 it was, is square in a square. If you wanted to check out other building block basic tutorials, those were also episode 28 and 29. So we've done half square triangles. We've done quarter square triangles. We did square and a square last week. And today we're going to look at the flying goose unit. So last week's question was, what will you put in your square and a square? Like, are you going to do an I spy quilt? And the random thingamajizer picked the winner as... Benita, congratulations. So I will get you your Colorworks gift card out to you via email. Congratulations to everybody and to Benita for winning this week. And thank you guys, as always, for pitching in your comments so we have fun here and we can give away a gift card and all that stuff. So 
Before I go over to the tutorial, I want to talk about our all stacked up quilt along. Um, for those of you who might be new to the program or just checking in, we did the all stacked up quilt along. Now you can still jump in and do this quilt along. Uh, we just finished it. It was a really short, fast, fun three week quilt along. And um, it's up at the Colorworks Quilt Along Facebook page. That's a group page that you can join. No, you don't, no admission, nothing like that. You just ask to join. And of course, I approve everybody most of the time. And then um, the other way that you can do the Quilt Along is to go to our website and click on the tab that says Quilt Alongs, and you'll have access to all the blog posts and companion videos there as well. All you need is the pattern. But so exciting things are happening over in the Colorworks Quilt Along page because as people got through with their all stacked up quilt alongs, everybody was posting these beautiful, beautiful photos of all their all stacked up quilts. So this week and two weeks from now, when we return February 19th, I'm going to actually do a little slideshow of all the finished quilts. So we have our first slideshow today. We'll, if Carl goes over there, we'll hit it. And these are some beautiful, beautiful all stacked up quilts that appeared on the Colorworks quilt along page. So there, and hopefully I have everybody's name correctly associated with their quilt. If not, just give me a comment there. Um, Benita, of course, did this beautiful colorway here. And there's Catherine's. There were lots of Cape faucets, but there were lots of other different colorways being used. Um, so there are um, the first two going on. And this is in no particular order of importance. I just kind of put together the slideshow. Um, Carolyn's beautiful cape again. And next door is Denise um, with some cape and it looks like solids as I can see. Um, and then we go to, let's see, Donna. Oh yes, Donna used the Tula Pink True Colors uh, um, fat quarter bundle that she had. So that was came out great. And then we have Julie's beautiful, it looks like cape, and that's the new cape that just came out a couple minute, uh, a couple months ago. Um, next we have, aren't these gorgeous? This is Jen. So Jen is our mid-century modern maven, and she did two all stacked up quilts out of some mid-century modern fabric that she had. So she actually did two different versions there. And this is a beautiful one by Alita. This is the uh, Mandala Magic. Uh, I believe it's called um, Fat Quarter Bundle out of Island Boutiques, designed by um, our friend Jackie. And so this is beautiful. And she put that border on it just to encapsulate it too. Gorgeous, gorgeous uh, fabric there going on. It's just a nice sherbety look to it all. Um, thank you, Alita, for that one. And this is JA. And so this, and this, these are taking up one page because the, the uh, landscape photo going on. Um, so that is gorgeous too, use of solids and then with a print going on. Who's next, Carl? Ah, Kathy, look at that one. I believe that is Tula Pink Homemade. Is it the sewing one, Carl? The sewing? Like it, yes. yes. Yes, that is gorgeous. Another gorgeous colorway. So you can see almost anything works with this all stacked up pattern going on. It is super fun, super fast, super easy to do. There we have uh, Lena's um, beautiful mixture of florals and solids. I've already quilted. And she, like... yeah, she already quilted. She is on fire. And um, Lynn's uh, beautiful version with flowers and solids, it looks like. And that's just a more super saturated color palette. It's gorgeous. And who's next? Uh, Linda did more pastels. Yes. And then Sandy, it looks like Sandy has her husband holding that up, I believe. But that's just a really fun, um, kind of almost a primary colorway going on with Sandy's too. That's gorgeous. And then we have Nan Nancy just finished her whole one. So I'm going to put Nancy's in in two weeks because we just got the picture, Nancy. I apologize. I just saw it today that you finished the whole quilt. And so I, I didn't get a chance to redo the slideshow, but we thought that was cute with your cat too. So we kept that up there. And then we have Pauline's version, which is all, it looks like all solids. And then Pauline did something very clever. If you look up at the top of her picture, she used all, you get an extra half square triangle um, when you make this out of every block, every pair of fabrics. So you were left over with a bunch of half square triangles. Um, and for you Colorworks Quilt Along folks, I'm gonna um, post up a little project that I'm doing with my half extra half square triangles. So you can make like a little table topper or something. But Pauline got very clever and she used those extra half square triangle blocks to put, uh, to make an outer border for herself. So that is something else you can do. That was very clever. And last but not least, we have Susan. Susan did a beautiful version. Look at that. Very stunning. And then of course I put mine up there on the right. That's using the 
Favorite Things by Sassafras Lane, um, designed by Shayla Wolf. And if we go to, um, so those are all beautiful, all stacked up quilts. Thank you everybody for letting me share your quilts uh, with everybody here. And again, we'll do it on February 19th. And then if Carl brings up that little next card I was going to talk about. Yes, there we are. Favorite things. So I want to talk about favorite things for a minute. That is the collection that I used with my all stacked up quilt. So I want to let you know next week, if you go to Sassafras Lane, and everybody knows that, right? Shayla Wolf, Sassafras Lane, go to her Instagram page. A lot of designers, myself included, are getting together with Shayla, and we're doing what we call the Instagram tour for favorite things fabric collection. But better than that, you'll get to see everybody's, you know, different projects they've made with her fabulous, coloricious fabric. Um, but better than that, she's giving away fat quarter bundles every day of the tour. So if you like what you're seeing there on Sassafras Lane and you want to enter to get a chance to win a fat quarter bundle, please make sure that you write down those dates. It's February, I think, 7th through 10th. If we go back to that card, what is the date there? 1 through 7. It's uh, no, 7, 7 through 13. 13. So February 7th through 13, uh, just check in with Sassafras Lane Designs over on Instagram only. This is not Facebook. Instagram only. And then there'll be a list of designers each day that you go visit to look at the projects they've made. And then you enter a chance to win a fat quarter bundle. So we'll be talking about that next week, of course, posting that. But I just wanted to give you guys a total heads up on that. Okay, so are we ready for Building Block Basics, our last um, tutorial of Building Block Basics um, in this round, basically? And we're going to talk about flying geese. So shall we go over to the overhead and talk about the flying geese? I'm taking a sip of water. I'm going over here to the overhead now. Here I am. Woo! Okay, let's talk about flying geese. Because flying geese are fun to make, but one of my big frustrations with the flying goose unit was I always managed to cut off this tip right up here where these two black pieces are overlapping. I also always ended up with this wonky, a wonky shaped flying goose unit, and I could never figure out what I was doing wrong. Now, there are several ways to make a flying goose unit. Um, this is just one way I'm going to show you, and I'm going to show you a second way to piece them. You can also foundation piece them or paper piece them, which, you know, basically means that you're building it up on paper. That is the most exact way to do a flying goose unit. You'll never cut off your points. It'll always come out the size it's supposed to be, et cetera, et cetera. But a lot of people don't like foundation piecing or paper piecing. So let's talk about the fundamentals of a flying goose unit. This particular method I'm going to show you um, starts with basically a rectangle that is the goose or the geese or however you want to describe it. So this is the this is the center here, this particular fabric. And the the flying geese unit as you do this method will never grow larger or smaller than what you start this rectangle with um, on this particular method. So right now I've got this cut at three and a half by six and a half. And if you look at any of the flying geese units, you'll notice that they're always in increments of how do you call that, like halves of each other? Mm -hmm. So whatever the, whatever, divisible by two. they're divisible by two. That's a good way of putting it, Carl. So whatever the length is of a goose unit, if you divide that by two, that's probably how tall it is. So again, this is unfinished now, three and a half by six and a half. When it gets all sewn in, it'll be three by six. So again, you can see six divisible by two is three. So if you want to make your own flying goose unit, just remember that rule. So if you wanted to make something that was you know, 10 inches wide, then it should probably be five inches tall. Now, how do you know what, what size to cut these at? These are actually cut as squares. These are going to be divisible by two again. So because this unit is three and a half by six and a half, these two units have to then become divisible by two, add your half inch seam allowance. So they're three and a half by three and a half inch squares. The other way to remember it is take whatever, how tall it is, and when you cut it and cut two squares the same size. So this was cut at three and a half. These two squares are cut three and a half by three and a half. What you do next is you draw a line on the back side of each square. And you're going to simply start on one side of your goose unit like this. And you're going to actually sew right on that line. Or my tip is you sew right above the line. And what does that look like when I say that? It looks like that. So can you see where my line is drawn 
if I get it really up super close to you. And can you see how I didn't really sew directly on the line? I actually sewed a hair above my drawn line. And the reason I do that, and you can do that a couple different ways on your sewing machine. You can set your needle position over one, one notch over so it always hits to the up, up side of the line, if you will. You can use your edge foot, which has the metal bar in the middle of it, and just sew a little above the line. You can eyeball it. Now, why do I do that? Well, because that was one of my pet peeves when I made Flying Geese Unit is every time I sew directly on the line, uh, when I flip the tip of the square out like this, it would never come up and meet this corner, and that's what you want it to do. When you flip your tip up, you want it to meet this edge right here. And uh, thread takes up seam allowance, um, fabric, the fold of the fabric takes up seam allowance, and all of that takes away that precious space you need when you sew directly on the line. So by sewing right above the line, by a hair now, and I'm talking like a thread, a hair above the line, that gives you that extra little bit of seam allowance. So when you flip this up uh, near the iron, you want to force the point the right side of the point to match the underside, if you will, before you cut anything away. Once you are, once you've pressed it and you're pretty sure that it has, it's meeting this out, this point down here, you can certainly go ahead and cut away the extra uh, bulk of fabric back here. And then I would just flip that back up. Now to add the other side, I simply take my other square and I put it right on the other side. And yes, these squares are supposed to overlap each other. That's what's gonna give you that extra quarter inch at the top. Sorry, let me bring that down. At the top so you don't cut off your point. So what does that look like? Well, that looks like this. So I've sewn my other square to the other side. I've sewn a hair above my line. I'm not gonna cut away this extra stuff yet until I make sure that when I flip it, and even if you're a little wonky with your stitch, stitch here, you can still fold this square up here. That's why you want to leave this in place and have it match perfectly above and then press it really well. Maybe even give it a little Mary Ellen's best press. And once you're assured that it has matched up at that corner, then you can go ahead and trim away the extra seam allowance. And again, what did I tell you when we started this? This flying goose unit will never get larger or smaller than what you started with as your, as your, sorry, I'm all fingers today, as your rectangle. So if this started at three and a half by six and a half, this flying goose unit will be, or should be, three and a half by six and a half when you finish. It's as simple as that. So what, what do you do? Then you can start sewing these together. And because you have this nice quarter inch overlap of background material here or whatever this is, you're not going to cut off your point, basically. Now, what's another way of making a flying geese unit? Maybe because maybe you don't like this method, you want to do something else. Well, how about if we go back to our very first tutorial? Oh, oh, when was it? Uh, for the building block basics. I'm just getting my other pieces here. And remember, we made half square triangles. That was episode number 28 of, of um, the Fab Friday, if you want to check out the tutorial. So remember, two squares in, you get two half square triangles out. So again, you would cut, if you were going to make a, a, a um, three and a half by six and a half inch flying goose unit like this one, you would have to make two three and a half inch half square triangles. And what was the golden rule of half square triangles was don't cut them in the seven eighths, just round them up to the next a uh, whole number. So you would start with four inch squares. You would draw your line uh, on the back side. You would put them right sides together, just like you're making half square triangles. You would sew a quarter inch to either side of those, that drawn line. That looks like something like this, right? And I've got my, my seam allowance there. I cut them in half. I go over and I'm going to now get two half square triangle units out of here. And when I press that flat and square it down to three and a half by three and a half, because remember, we're making a three and a half by six and a half inch flying goose unit. So half of that six and a half or that 
tallness is three and a half. That's what we need our, our units to come out to be. So I'm going to get two half square triangles out of two squares. I'm going to press the seam allowance on this one going towards the, the uh, red fabric, and I'm going to press the seam allowance going towards the black fabric on this one. And I've squared them down to three and a half by three and a half. So what does that look like when I put these together? Well, there it is. So if I put these together, and of course, if I've pressed my seams going in alternate directions, then they're just going to nest together and make a, a beautiful little flying goose unit that looks like this. Now, the only difference between this unit and this unit is that you have a seam going down the middle. So if you wanted to do like a, um, a uh, dual colored flying goose unit for some reason, maybe in a green and a light green, and be kind of artsy like that, you could do this method and make um, kind of bicolored, uh, you know, uh, geese. geese. Uh, or you can have this one, which has no seam in it. So again, once you sew these together, um, you would get um, kind of geese flying around. Now, I want to give you a little tip when you sew them together. So if I turn this one to the back, there it is. I have actually drawn in for you, uh, and let me bring it way up here. We'll get it right in focus. Okay, can you see, I've done a half circle right here just to get your eye to go right there. And I have darkened my seam line that goes like this and my seam line that comes diagonally there for you guys to see. And what I want you to do is zoom in right here on this intersection between the two seam lines. It's like at the crossroads. If you, when you're stitching um, flying geese together, and this goes for any time you have a little map that directs you back here. I call it like a little, a little hint that directs you where to sew. If you're sewing a straight seam across here, connecting flying geese together, if you aim to sew right through this intersection right here, okay, where the two seam lines intersect, you will never cut off your point. That is a big clue to you when you sew flying geese together or anything that has any type of intersection going on like that, like half square triangles and et cetera, et cetera. So right there, use your little stitch lines to give you a hint of where to sew. And I'll leave it right there. Can you see that? Yay, okay. So what can you do? Well, I'm gonna give you a little a preview here. So you can sew beautiful flying geese together in a row and make a big, huge border for your quilt or uh, just another block. And so the hint here is um, sneaky peek, you guys. Um, you're seeing a sneaky peek of some things happening here in Colorworks with a very large company in the um, oh, Midwest, uh, you know, that has an M starting as their first name. But yes, here's a sneaky peek of something coming your way in May. Um, that will be uh, coming from that company, and we're very excited about it. So um, this is what you can do with flying geese here. And you can see none of my points are really cut off because I did that, that golden rule of making sure that I used the, the little um, hint that my stitch lines gave me back there not to cut off my point. What else can you do? Well, remember last week's tutorial, we were doing square and a square. And we made this fancy square out of cave faucet fabric. Well, what happens if you connect? Here's another sneaky peek. What happens if you connect flying geese with a square and a square, or even a half square triangle, or anything else we've talked about in the last couple of weeks? Why not? This kind of looks like, um, I don't know, it looks like the square is, is kind of radiating out, radiating out a flying geese unit, perhaps. And if you flip um, it up the other way, I yeah, Carl like says if I lamp. flip it like this, it looks like a lava lamp. I'm not yeah. sure about that. Or a um, potty pen. Here. But, but there you go. So there is um, some, some different ways of making the flying geese unit. And again, um, just keep that in mind that you want to sew right above the line if you do the square in the corner method, or if you want to make, and I'll show that again, the square in the corner method, which is this one, which has no seam line in the middle. And of course, I've cut off my, my squares there. Um, or if you want to do half square triangles, you can certainly put half square triangles together to make a flying geese unit that has a seam in the middle. Although if you're using a very busy fabric like this, you, you probably don't see it too much. So there you go, flying geese unit. Put your questions in the comments for me. As I move over, we're gonna check in with the cactus cam really quickly. And um, oh, it's gone off, how exciting. 
you know, we're just not having any luck with our flying, our, our cactus can these days. It is the it is it is not reliable. It is not reliable at all. It's not reliable technology at all. Um, and there was so, a golfer. And there was a golfer finally. Oh my. oh my goodness! So let me know what you think about the flying geese tutorial, you guys. Um, that is the end of our building basics tutorial. Now, when we come back on February nineteenth, Carl, I think, is going yes, to I'll do. Be doing something. He'll be doing something. He hasn't decided yet what well, he's I have doing. I decided, but oh, I'm trying to figure out which one it is. I'm going to go with. So while you guys are kind of, we're all settling again, I also want to give you a kitchen update because some of you have been asking me in comments what's going on with the kitchen. So nothing's going on with the kitchen. Can I, that's the update. Nothing's going on with the kitchen, well, right? Well, we did get it measured for the countertop. This well, time. yeah, I mean, the countertop is being built and that's why there's nothing going on with the kitchen because we're at that point in the kitchen remodel. The bath remodel, on the other hand, the little guest bath that's down there is waiting on me trying to find the perfect vanity. So I can't tell you when that will be done because I have feelers out, like, you know, where you say, email me when this vanity comes in stock. Um, and, and I haven't been emailed yet. So, um, you know, I could just, we could just put something in there, but that just wouldn't be nearly as fun. So the kitchen remodel, it's on, pro, it's on schedule, um, but it's not happening until we get the countertop. Once we get the countertop installed, which would happen in two weeks or so, um, things will start to progress more. And I'm hoping to, you know, give you a full picture view when it's all in its most glorious end bit, so to speak. Um, so do we have any questions about the tutorial we before we bug out today? Oh, great tips, says Carol. Thank you, Carol. That's very nice of you. Nedra. You know, Nedra says, great tutorial. Thank you. I've always what wondered about the math. Yes, yes. And Sandra says, great tip. Thank you. You guys are so nice. Thank you, Helen. Says, fun. Well, that's what about, about fun. Nancy, how do you press the points? You mean press the points out? Um, you just you just flip them over and press them. Should I go back over to the cutting board for a minute? I can get um, you back there. Yes. So, I'll oh, did I leave right too now. soon? No. Yes, you're there. Okay. I so I think this is what, Nancy, how do you press? You mean these points out? So when they're... Let me yeah. find my. Let me flip the monitor for you. Oh God, I'm a mess here after I do a tutorial. I can't find. Okay, so so if you have this square on this side, like this, I think this is what Nancy's asking, and you stitch across there, you simply just push it out to meet its 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 corner here, and you just flip it and then press it, and then you would stitch, you would cut away the extra here, but don't cut away the extra until you know that this is actually meeting this point right here. So when I flip the tip up, it, it, it should match exactly. It shouldn't grow larger. It shouldn't be smaller. And then I just cut away the extra. I hope that answered your question, Nancy. I, I think that's what you were asking, right? About um, how to press the point. Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm going back over here now. I'll let you sit down. Oh. He's so courteous about that. Anybody else have any questions before we before we bug out for the beautiful weekend here? Um, I, I think we're going to have like temperature at 75, maybe 80 degrees. So it's gorgeous and it's dry, which is nice. It's not humid um, weather. Nancy, oh. Nancy had an update on that question. When press? When press? How do you? When do you press that point out after you? You press that point out when you when you stitch. So once you stitch across oh. right above the line, then you go over to your ironing board before you do anything else and flip the tip out and press it so it matches the yeah, underside. Update from Nancy. Oh, when you're stitching blocks, blocks together, together. When you're putting your blocks together. Yes. Pressing the tip out. Back to the overhead for a minute. Okay. Let's see if I can answer Nancy's question. Okay, so are we talking, Nancy, let's see, are we talking about when we stitch blocks together and you press, I press the tip outward towards up, if that makes sense. I don't, I, this is too bulky, if that's what you're asking. So I press all one direction and you can see that the t they're being pressed away from their tip because that creates less bulk on the front side. Is that I think. Is that is that what you're asking? Oh God, I have fumbly fingers here today. Can you believe it? Well, Mary, okay, Mary says, when putting the flying geese together, yes. So you can see right there under the camera, I'm pressing, I'm pressing away from the tip. 
if possible. Sometimes it's not possible. But here I've pressed away from the tip on this one too. Nancy said yes. Yes, thanks. Oh, good. Okay, I always like to make sure we answer everybody's questions here in case you want to go and try this after the show. Yeah, so press away from the tip. Now, sometimes it's not possible to do this, and you can certainly, there was an old wives' tale a long time ago that you can't press seams open because somehow your, your batting would show up between the seams if you press them open. That's kind of an old wives' tale now because fabric's gotten so much better. So you can press these seams open if you like, okay? You can press them open, but you're still gonna end up with a little bulk right here. This is where all your bulk is, and there's no way of avoiding that. So you just do the, I always think you press to the path of least resistance, unless you were using white, like a very light fabric in your goose unit. Like if this were a white color, you would, might see a little shadow of your seam back there. So that would be something to keep in mind. Um, and you might want to then press seams open at that point. Um, so I'm glad I answered your question anyway. So before we bug out, we have to ask the question for the ColorWorks gift card for two weeks from now when we give it away, which is, and it's silly, are you ready? Well, you have to get me over there. Are we ready? Will you make a gaggle oh. of geese? That's the question for the $10 ColorWorks gift card that you need to put in the comment section. Will you make a gaggle of geese? You can't just make one flying geese unit. You have to make a gaggle of geese units. Maybe, sort of. Okay. And then when we come back in two weeks, remember we'll be back February 19th. Um, we'll have more information on online classes. This is one of them called Bodacious Blossoms Made Easy. And we're going to have the Cosmos class up there for you guys to take if you want to, the Color Bugs class up there, and also the Got Color Lecture with Carl. So those are some exciting things coming your way. And of course, our fabric coming out from Island Boutiques called Coloricious is coming in April. And with all of that, I think we are ready for the weekend, right? Uh, yes. Okay. I believe so, because all right. my script is just flowing he, the he lost his way. But So we're going to say goodbye to you guys. You guys have been so great to indulge us today on kind of a, a rocky show here. And we appreciate you guys checking in. Make sure you share and like this video. Um, so that always helps uh, with numbers. I, I, I hate to say that, but, you know, there's some weird things going on with Facebook these days. So... Um, and uh, also go over and help us reach a thousand subscribers on our ColorWorks YouTube channel. So we certainly appreciate everybody showing up today. We really love the fact that you guys indulge us every week here and we love hearing from you and commenting even though we only do it through comments and things like this. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Look for more ColorWorks quilt alongs coming in the next few weeks. We're gonna announce a new one as well. And so we'll have information on that February 19th as well. So until then, happy, happy, happy Coloricious quilting to you all. Have a great weekend. Stay safe, stay sane out there. And we will see you February 19th for another episode of Fab Friday. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.